Okay, so here we have it, the River Tees, from source to mouth, or as the AQA says, a river valley in the UK to identify its major landforms of erosion and deposition. So the River Tees is found up on the northeast of England. It flows easterly from a western high point near Cow Green, down along past places such as Barnard Castle, Darlington, between Middlesbrough and Stockton on Tees, and finally out to an estuary in the North Sea. So what can we find? Well, up in the upper catchment, we are dominated by vertical downward erosion, giving interlocking spurs, waterfalls, and vertical erosion creating rapids. Of these three, it's the first two that I think are going to get you the most marks. And of those first two, it's actually high force waterfall. High force is the name of the waterfall, 21 meters high, hard rock over soft rock, and the water of the Tees cascades over the hard rock and then erodes by those cash processes. Remember them, the sandstone and softer rocks and shales. If we then move down from the lower force, uh, which are rapids, which is just essentially you've not got one deep, steep drop, you've got lots and lots of big rocks because they've not been knocked together, attrition, and the water cascades over them. So the next feature to come up is where you've got both a lateral erosion, which means sideways, and deposition. That clearly gives you your meander. Remember, inside of the slope, deposition. Outside of the slope, where the thalweg is, thalweg, core of fastest flowing water, we have erosion. These can be found in Barnard Castle and then further down. So if you then subdivide it down into the lower course, in the lower course you'll find some more mature meanders which have sinuously bent back on themselves so much that we're now beginning to see Oxbow Lake formation. And you can see that these can be found near a place called Yarm. Yarm, great word. If we move further down, we now lose lateral erosion as a feature and we just get deposition. The flood plain is caused by when the water rises in the river, can't be held in the channel anymore, and spills over, giving you a flood plain. Where it first spills over and slows down, the biggest material is dropped. And that begins to give you a bank, and that's a levee. And in fact, if you think about it, what the river is trying to do is to build itself a bigger channel capacity by building this extra bank. Rivers are smart. Finally, and I'll move myself out of the way to just hop skip, Right at the mouth of the Tees, we find an estuary. And estuaries, remember, are tidal. At high tide, they're covered in water, flat, extensive areas covered in water. At low tide, the water descends, and you can often make out vegetation. All of it, of course, adapted to salty water conditions. A great place for flora and fauna. That's plants and animals for you and me. So in a bit more detail, here is your interlocking spurs in the upper uh, catchment at a place called Cross Fell. Interlocking spurs caused by the river cutting downwards as it meandered. And then there's the beautiful majestic joy of high force. Windsill, you can see the nature of the rock here. Compared with just underneath, you can probably make out a different layering, horizontal layering of the sandstones and the grits. So the water of the Tees cascades over the top, it's found a way through the hard rock and it's now able to tumble down and erode a nice plunge pool and that gives you your waterfall. There it is, high uh, force waterfall and the interlocking spurs of Cross Fell. So if you move further down the stream, we now have meandering, which is lateral erosion, remember. And here's a classic example of a meander. There's your inside of a meander corner and here is your deposition and your slip off slope or river cliff or sorry, river beach. And the, therefore we know that the outside of the meander is where the fastest flow is. And that's where the erosion is going on, digging, digging, digging. Deposition on the inside, erosion on the outside. And there's a plan view of exactly the same kind of feature. Okay, so these can be found near Barnard Castle. And notice they've got lateral erosion and deposition. A little bit further down the river, you'll find that there are still meanders taking place, but those meanders now are really much more bendy and sinuous, and they're just right for cutoffs and just right for leaving behind. You just imagine a cutoff there. It would leave behind this stretch of water as an oxbow lake. When will that cutoff happen? Probably during high flow sometime in February or March. Second feature is the levee. You can just see the bank here on the left-hand side of this diagram, not man-made made by the river flooding and depositing material, and then that's been colonized and stabilized by grass. So if you think about it, 
the river is able to flood out and it would be kept between these two levee banks. So the river's smart, it's trying to make a greater capacity for itself before going out onto the floodplain. And finally, there's the estuary, flat, low tide view, this one probably. You can see the grasses and you can see the sedges. And this is dominated by very, very important halophytic plants, plants adapted to salty conditions. There in a nutshell, the three locations, meanders at Yarm, Levies at Stockton and the estuary of the Tees at the North Sea. A couple of questions which are found for you on the, uh, the SAM. And you can see here we've got the uh, classic question, describe the major landforms of erosion in a UK river valley and explain the formation of the Roxbow Lakes. Absolute staples. Remembering you've got to relate to a specific valley. So remember those places, possibly go back and review or have a look at the resource. And finally, Remember, if you want to have a look, we may have got it or not, a Kahoot page, look at the FK study, or another YouTube page for other videos. Good luck.